Hey, it's Mark Andrews with this second episode of the 2019 OCFOA Plays of the Week. This uh, episode, we're going to focus more on rules. Uh, again, th welcome to all my new subscribers. I'm very flattered and glad you're along for the ride. Let's get going. All right, let's talk about uh, illegal participation. Uh, just take a look at the screen right now. You'll see all the different categories of illegal participation. And of course, we have illegal substitution as well. And it's important to know the difference between the two uh, categories of foul. Obviously, illegal participation is much bigger foul. It's 15 yard penalty. Substitution is a five yard penalty. So know this table and know the substitution rules. And, uh, you know, you'll save yourself from, <laughs> from uh, getting a penalty enforcement wrong. Um, we're going to talk about 961 and 962, which involve a player going out of bounds and then returning to the field. So let's take a look at the film. All right, let's take a look at those specific rules. 961 says, basically says no A or K player shall go out of bounds and return to the field during the down unless blocked out of bounds by an opponent. If a player is blocked out of bounds, he must return to the field at his first opportunity. Okay, so there's a lot of room for judgment in that rule. This The 962 rule says no player, this is offense or defense, shall intentionally go out of bounds and return to the field or intentionally touch the ball so they could intentionally touch the ball without being on the field. Uh, influence the play, again, they could influence the play from out of bounds or otherwise participate. So um, this tells us that just going out of bounds uh, intentionally is not a foul. They have to either influence the play, come back on the field, or some or intentionally touch the ball. And the uh, the spot of that foul is where that occurs. So in the case of returning to the field, it's where they come back onto the field, not where they left the field. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, let's take a look at this play. Now we're not going to see much here uh, from this zone. You're just going to see the the uh, end result. Nice catch there by the receiver. And then we have a flag. And that flag is for illegal participation. We're going to see from the end zone here what happened. So you can see the receiver right here, and he is close to the sidelines, and you can see the uh, number four's hand on him. And as they go downfield, he is basically pushed out of bounds. Now, it wasn't much, and this is why the, um, the official thought that, you know, this was illegal participation, but that is enough, okay? What we're going to, what, the way we're going to interpret this rule is if there's any contact between the defender and the player that goes out of bounds, then we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. If they return immediately, we're not going to rule uh, illegal participation. Now, this gets even messier. You watch this. We, uh, we talked the other night at our meeting about optics, and I think the optics on this play are not good. Uh, there's a lot of confusion. You can see the official coming back and marking the spot. Now that doesn't matter. This is a this would be a previous. This is a loose ball play, right? This is a previous spot enforcement. But you know we remember that. Oh, it's where he came back in. That's the foul. Um, that would only come into play in an all but one enforcement. But you can see the line judge is going to mark. You know, stand over the spot. And now there's a long discussion with the referee. And again, this looks like um, confusion, right? So watch this play out. Watch number four there. He is in the receiver's face. And what I don't like about this is that we have the white hat questioning the calling official. The line judge should be offering his you know what he saw 
he had a good look at that uh, contact as well, but he's not even involved in the conversation. We've got the uh, umpire involved. I don't know why he's over there. And then watch number four. He's going to go over there and he's going to start mocking. Uh, see, now we got another official come in. Got the coaches getting involved. Now watch, watch four mimic number six jumping around. Look at this. All right. All the while, this is happening while uh, they're talking. And this that should not have been allowed to happen. I'm not saying you necessarily throw a flag, but you would definitely get number four to get away from this meeting. These guys should not be standing around the officials. So if you're not involved with the call and you're you're standing here, get these guys away from the conference. Or if you're the officials, move away from this group of, of players. They should not be in the middle of these players. All right, so I hope we've uh, made that clear. Uh, this was uh, enforced from the previous spot, which was good, and but uh, the, the call itself was not a correct call. All right, let's move on. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about game management. Uh, so look at this formation. This needs to be cleaned up. I mean, none of these uh, linemen are actually on the line. And I'm not suggesting that you would throw a flag here, but you would definitely want to inform the coach that the linemen are not on the line. They need to move up. And also let your referee and umpire know. All right. And I'm telling you this because, as you can see, this is play 11. This is early in the game. And I'm going to show you a play just a few plays later where this comes into a you know into effect in a big way all right so here's our initial keys we've got the tackles on either side or the responsibility of the flanks right the guard and center the, <laughs> the two guards in the center are the responsibility of the umpire the receiver keys because this is a balanced formation the widest receiver to the line judge side is the line judge key the inside receiver is the back judge key and the two receivers on this side are the head linesman's keys. All right, let's watch the play. Watch, keep your eye on the line judge. Now he's leaving the line of scrimmage immediately. Why? He his his responsibility is that tackle. And uh, you remember, snap tackle back, right? We don't want to start drifting until our key is about 10 yards downfield. We want to maintain about a 10, 8 to 10, 12 yard cushion on the receiver. All right, he is, you know, there's his key right there. And the key's not threatened. So he's staring at the quarterback. He's ball watching. He has no idea if, if his tackle is fouling or is getting fouled. All right, now watch. He continues to look at the quarterback. He never takes his eyes off the quarterback. He has no idea if his key is getting fouled right now. All right. And this works out. I mean, nothing happens here. We just have an incomplete pass. He's way too close to the play. You know, balls on the ground, incomplete. All right. Let's look at the next play. All right. So this is two plays later up here. Play 13. Now the uh, other team has the ball. And take a look at this formation. I mean, these guys are in the backfield. There is... They're not even close to being on the line, all four of them. I mean, this guy, he might as well be a back. He's further back than this receiver. <laughs> okay, so again, clean this up early. Okay, so this is the very next play. Take a look at this. I mean, they obviously think this is they're going to get away with this, right? And, you know, if this is a pass situation or if they're pulling, this is a huge advantage. Watch what happens here. They're pulling. And guess what? They got a straight line to wherever, you know, wherever they're going. Got to clean it up. Next play. Next play, still illegal. All right, so this is six plays from the previous play. The yellow team had the ball. They punted. Now this is the first play of the second series for the team in white. And as you can see, they are still in that same formation. And this time, the head linesman is going to get them. He's gonna, and this is a correct call, I'm not saying. But watch what happens.
Touchdown. Called back. Now I guarantee you, if we'd have cleaned this up on that first or second play, this would not have happened. The coach would have responded, he would have adjusted, and we would not have taken six off the board. Game management is important. All right, so we're going to see a missed dead ball personal foul that is really big, and it doesn't get called. In my opinion, we should have at least three flags on this, and it gets missed. And this is an excellent crew. These guys know what they're doing. Watch what happens right there. I hope you all saw that. Watch the number 31 there come in. There is, I mean, this play is over. And that action right there, that is at the very least a blindside block. And uh, more than likely it's a dead ball personal foul. But it is a foul no matter how you slice it. So how do we miss this? Well, I think we missed the, the. I think the flank misses it on this side because he's judging progress. There's a lot of action going on. You can see he's looking at that action. He doesn't expect to see this guy come flying in. So who could get this? Well, certainly the back judge could get it uh, if he was, you know, eagle-eyed. I think the umpire could really help out on this. But our umpire is staring at the line after. You see where he's looking. He's looking at this. Now there's nothing really going on here. Ball's away. I would prefer that the umpire be pivoting at this point and following the action. Now th this is a really, really good umpire. This guy is really good. But see, he's still not looking. He's 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 officiating air right there. He's still not looking. Still not looking. He may have been able to pick that up. He goes out of, out of frame. But the bottom line is we had too many eyes on the runner and not enough eyes around the runner for this kind of action. So I want you guys to keep thinking about this. You know, we want to see the stuff around the runner. Don't be staring at the guy with the ball. All right, moving on. All right. This is that same crew that was in the previous clip. And actually, the umpire that I had a few criticisms for in the previous clip has a crusader moment on this one. So, as, as I said before, very good official. So, let's talk about keys on the kickoff. Now, this is Orange County, guys. So, if, if make sure if you're watching this in another association that you check with your instructional chairman if this is correct for your association. Um, the line judge has the four widest players initially on his side of the field. The head linesman, who is out of frame, but he's on the 30-yard line, has the four players to his side, the widest ones. And then the back judge is going to circle in and take the three middle players. These are all initial. So when this contact occurs with these upfront blockers, this is what you know. These are the four. These are the keys that, that these officials should be focusing on. Now the umpire is way back on the uh, 10, I think it is. He is looking for uh, flyers getting through and action on them. All right, here we go. Now, you can see the line judge is watching this player here for initial action, starting to move downfield. Now these lead blockers are moving towards the line judge side. So it, all eyes should shift to this side of the field. That includes the uh, back judge, and he needs to have uh, the players that are not directly involved in front of the runner. He needs to take like the zone three type of coverage. Watch these two right here. And you can see it's not a hold yet, but there's definitely something going on, right? So the umpire obviously saw this, and he's looking through and he gets this hold. Now, this looks like this guy's going to get stopped, but he doesn't. He makes, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and now the umpire's got that hold. And watch it. The, the guy actually ends up on the ground. So that was a big time takedown. And it's point of attack. 
and that runner is off for an apparent touchdown, but that's going to be brought back. Great job by this crew. Okay, now we're going to talk about uh, blocking below the waist in the free blocking zone. I know we've talked a lot about it. I want to use this as an example of an illegal block in the free blocking zone. Notice the formation, quarterbacks in the shotgun formation. So let's take a look at the requirements for the free blocking zone. So I've, I've drawn a you know representation of the free blocking zone. It extends four yards to either side of the ball three yards into each offense and defensive backfield. So uh, that is the free blocking zone. And the, uh, the rule regarding legal blocking below the waist in the free blocking zone states that all players involved in the blocking are on the line of scrimmage. Now the line of scrimmage for the offense, of course, is a straight line that's drawn through the center's hip and some part of the uh, lineman has to be breaking that line. So all of these players are on the line of scrimmage. For the defense, it, the, the rule says that the defend, defensive player has to be within one yard of the ball to be on the defensive line of scrimmage. So those are the criteria that have to be met for players to be involved in a legal blow, low block. Now, uh, the contact also has to be in the zone. I think I already said that. <laughs> in addition, 217-4 talks about when the free blocking zone disintegrates and that is when the ball has left the zone all right let's take a look at this play so we're going to see an, an illegal block by that right tackle on the defender highlighted and uh who can get this well the flank this is one of his pre, this is one of his pre-snap responsibilities as a tackle. Remember, we've got action at the snap, we go to the tackle, and then we start looking at the backs. Okay? So let's watch this. Now, you can see where the ball is. It is five yards beyond the line of scrimmage, behind the line of scrimmage. And this block has just started. I there hasn't even been contact made. It's literally his hands are touching him. Let's watch what happens next. All right. So clearly that block occurs, and this is important. The, the, the rule is interpreted that the block actually has to have been initiated. In other words, contact is made. Not just the guy going forward. Contact is made before that ball is out of the zone. And uh, let's just watch it in real time. So I hope you see that this is illegal because the, the zone has disintegrated. All right, let's move on. All right, in this play, we're going to talk about forward progress and cross-field mechanics. Let's take a look at this play. I'm going to turn the annotations off so it just runs. Here we go. Now notice the down. It's third down and one. Line to gain is about the 20 and a half yard line. So the question here is where do we have forward progress? Now you'll notice that uh, the line judge is marking the ball short of the 20. Let's turn on the annotation so we can see the uh, rule reference. Let's watch it again. I'll slow it down for you. Notice the receiver is coming back towards his own goal line. That complicates this. So forward progress in ends right here. This, as soon as contact is made and possession is established, this is the furthest most point of advancement. Even though he's going backwards, he still has advanced. Okay, and this is where this this got a little sideways because he was going backwards. Okay, I judged that to be around the 21, 20 and a half. We definitely, on my spot, we definitely would have either had a first down or it would have been a measurement. Tony did not judge the progress to be until 
shy, shy of the 20. Watch where he, he marks it. And he doesn't look at me. And uh, I think we could I could have helped him out on this. So, flanks, let's get used to using our partners, especially in a complicated, lots of things happening type of play like this involving either progress or the sideline. All right, let's move on. All right, this is the very next play, and uh, you're going to see yours truly really screw this up. Um, this is a seven-man game, and I forget that. I think we're in a five-man game. And, you know, this is just one of those things where you've got to remind yourself before a play like this, what are your, what are your responsibilities? In this case, my responsibility is the goal line. But I check out. And I think I'm still thinking about that previous play. But that's not an excuse. All right, so here's screw up number one. I am going the wrong way. I should be backpedaling at this point, maintaining a nice 20 yard cushion uh, from this runner. And my response, my zone responsibilities are up here. I need to be watching this action here. But I don't do that. And I therefore miss this. And I think I know why. I think I realize at this point that this runner is heading right for me and I am afraid for my life, basically. So watch what I miss. Big time blindside block. And I have to step out of the way. Now this guy is, you know, if he'd gone to the goal line and been in big trouble. And I'm also stealing the side judge's spot because, again, I forgot my responsibilities. So, you know, mechanics, mechanics, mechanics run through a little pre-snap checklist in your head about what you're supposed to be doing and this kind of stuff won't happen. All right, let's move on. I think I'm going to stop right here. I like to keep these plays of the week around 20 minutes long. I've got several more plays queued up and I've also got a instructional video from Steve Coover that I'm going to put out as episode three. So that should be coming up really quick. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click on my picture in the top right corner. If you're new to my YouTube channel, we've got several years of Plays of the Week videos on my channel as well as Film Study and, of course, the new 40-second uh, Play Clock video. Check it out. This is Mark Andrews signing off.